Hello, I'm Ads, and today I'm going to show you how I paint my Sautec Echo Warriors. Okay, so here I'm starting from a silver primer base coat. I use Blood Belcher for mine, but whatever your preferred color is will be grand. The first step is to give the whole mini a generous coat of a black wash. I've got no oil here. I'm doing this for two reasons. Firstly, I'm trying to let it run into all of the recesses on the miniature to darken them down and feign a shadow, as well as giving a nice separation between all the different areas. Slapping it on in this way also dulls down the base coat, which is a nice dark metal to build the rest of our colors onto. Secondly, metallic spray primers have a tendency to dry very smooth to the point where paint can separate away from where you're applying it to. An all over coat of the wash like this gives these paints I use from here on out something better to stick to, just makes life easier. Next I grab another wash, this time Agrax Earth Shade or any dark brown wash that you've got. With this I'm doing another all over shade but just on the skeleton metals this time. The idea is to add a brown tint to everything to make him look filthy and grimy. Warriors are, after all, not the cleanest of Necrons. Next I'm going to be dry brushing the mini. I grabbed a dry paint from Citadel here, Necron Compound, though any silver brighter than your base colour would be fine. If we're sticking with Citadel colours, for example, Ironbreaker is a great alternative here. I'm going over the whole skeleton again, trying to aim the brush strokes at corners, edges, and also the tops of bigger flat areas, tops of the thighs and the shoulder pads for example. I'm looking to start building in a gradient here which I can build upon with brighter silvers later on. Now I get some Stormhost silver and I edge highlight all of the areas on the skeleton. I'm going to hit every edge I can comfortably reach with the brush angling it flat against the side of the bristles wherever possible and using sharp brush strokes to get as clean and consistent a line as I possibly can around the whole edge. Now this is super time consuming and if you're painting up a bunch quickly a dry brush will do the job too but I just prefer the look of the edge highlight personally. It'll make the metals really pop from those dark areas. In some areas I'll throw in a lot more water to the paint to make a glaze which I'll use to build up those gradients I put in with the dry brushing earlier. This isn't at all necessary, it's just something I'll have a look of when it's all done. Lastly with the skeleton silvers, I bring back the brown wash I used earlier and thin it down with water. I'm applying this to the lower sections of larger flat areas, pulling my brush from just under the gradients to the very bottom of each panel. A few cuts of this and the warrior is starting to look really grimy. With the metals done, I'll do the details that will be harder to reach later on. So using some thinned matte black, I base coat the little cartouche on his chest. A couple thin layers here will stop the metallic sheen from showing through without clogging up all that fine detail. I next take Caliban Green and thin it down with a lot of water to make another glaze. I pull the paint from about halfway up the cartouche down to the bottom. A couple passes of this builds up a faint green fade to the bottom of the icon, makes it look like a really dark green that's just catching a bit of light. I then use Warpstone Glow to base coat the icon in the cartouche. For something this small and raised, I'll wick the brush off on a paper towel first to take some of the paint away, and use the side of the brush rather than the tip. This will reduce the risk of poking paint into areas that you don't want it. And lastly on the cartouche, I use Mook Green to highlight the arms of the symbol. This just helps the greens jump out against the dark background we put in. Again, I wick away some of the paint on the brush before applying and use the side of my brush to apply it. Next I'm looking at the cables housed in the chest cavity. I start on the ribbed cables in there and I'm using the same paints on the ones and the weapons whilst I'm at it. I start by basing the cables with Corax White, as I'll be using some contrast paints on these to speed up the process a little bit. With that dry, I give them an all over coat of Drift Charger Grey, 
followed by Black Templar. Griff Charger Grey adds a blue tint underneath the black, which gives me a head start on some of the cold black highlights. If you don't have contrast for this, base coating the cables in black and highlighting them with a dark blue-grey colour will give you the same effect. Citadel's Dark Reaper is a fine example. I'll then come in with Thunderhawk Blue and highlight the ridges. I do a nice thick highlight where I can, letting some of that previous Griff Charger Grey showing around it. I follow that with Fenrisian Grey, highlighting a smaller area than the Thunderhawk highlight, and lastly Ulthuan Grey as a spot highlight. Try and imagine a line of light running on the cable for this, and drop some grey where it lies on the cable. The more uniform your dots are, the smarter it'll look when finished. Now for the smooth cables in there. I use Demonet Hide for these, being as careful as I can not to spill over onto any of the surrounding finished cables or onto the silver. If you do make a mistake here, quickly wash off your brush and dab at the area to dilute the paint. If you're quick enough to clean off the mistake, let the water dry and then come back in and try again. Next I wash the cables with Null Oil. I do a couple passes here, once all over and then once at either end of the cable to darken down where it meets the ribcage. I then relayer the middle of the cables with some thinned warp fiend grey, doing a couple layers and leaving some of the dark and demonet hide around it. I'll also edge highlight the ends of any frayed cables with this, before doing a finer highlight of slanesh grey to finish them up. And the last detail to do before getting to the weapons are these small frayed wires you see poking out of some of the warrior's joints. I base coat these with Rune Lord Brass, give them a healthy wash of Agrax Earthshade and highlight them with Canop Tech Alloy. Okay, now onto the weapons. The same colours and processes will be fine for both Flayers and Reapers here, so don't worry if you come different to mine, you can do the same thing and have it look the same. I start by basing all the casing with Corvus Black, and leaving some areas silver on the weapons to break up the colour a bit. Particularly, I leave the coils on the side, the collar at the back of the barrel, the end of the barrel, the blade edge, and the decorative uh, thing above the blade as silver. With the case blocked in, I take Esh and Grey and edge highlight all of the edges. With edge highlighting, it's more beneficial to turn the model around rather than your brushing hand. I'll try and end up so that I'm making a downward stroke with the brush where I can, as it's most comfy for me. Use the edge of your brush where you can, and take your time. This is, again, fairly time consuming to do, especially if you're batch painting a whole squad, but it is worth it in the end. Lastly for the casing, I use Dawnstone for a more sparing edge highlight. I'll only do this on upper facing edges this time to mimic where light would be falling. Looping back round to the metallics now, I bring in Iron Breaker and start relayering the silvers on the gun. I saved some time earlier when I washed the whole mini with black wash at the start, so I can just get to brightening the silvers back up again. And lastly, I take Stormhouse Silver again and run a quick edge highlight on them. If you're feeling brave, you can paint in some streaks running perpendicular to the blade edge to make it look well worn. Okay, so now onto the fun part for me. All the greens. Firstly, I want that same dark green look that I used on the cartouche on the gun barrel, so I start by blocking it all in with matte black. I then heavily water down Caliban green to make a glaze. I wick off my brush and pull the brush from about a third of the way up the barrel back towards the edge. I do this on both ends, adding a couple coats to get that deep green effect. I then use Warpstone Glow and run a quick edge highlight around both ends of the barrel to finish it off. Next I'm doing some fancy glow effects. I take Corax White and throw a lot of water into it to make it more akin to ink. I'll then touch the tip of the brush into the circular recesses on the barrel, try my best not to catch the brush on the rim around it if I can. The paint floods the recess because it's so thin, meaning I don't have to jab my brush around in there too much. Two or three rounds of this with a very watery white will give a nice solid colour in the recess. I'll then base the orbs with the same colour just using less water to thin it with. Next I do the same process, only using Moot Green this time. Moot Green is a very transparent colour, so building in the white first means I don't need as many layers of green to get a solid colour in there. 
Again, heavily thin the colour and flood the recess on the barrel. One or two coats should be good, then lay the orbs. And now my secret sauce, Vallejo Green Fluo. I'll do another pass over the recesses with this before just applying it to the channels between the orbs. This colour amps up the saturation of the greens, but more importantly, makes them glow under a black light. As a last step on these, I water down some Gauss Blaster Green and pull in a hot spot to the middle of each orb. With the orbs done, use your previous colours, matte black and Caliban Green, to tidy up any mistakes that you may have made whilst filling the recesses. So for the rest of the steps we're going to be heavily involving glazing. I've touched on it a couple times so far in the video but I'm going to go ham from this point on. I'm sorry if that puts anyone off, I will try my best to walk through how I do it. Firstly I base the smooth cables on the weapons with Caliban Green. Nothing fancy here, just get a smoother coat as you can. Next I take Warpstone Glow and heavily water it down on my palette. It's practically dirty paint water when I use it. I wick off my brush, as I don't want it overloaded to do this, and drag the brush from the ends of the cable into the middle where the colour will be brightest. Let this coat completely dry, then repeat the process, covering a slightly smaller area than you did the first time. You'll start to see the colour building up to a solid green as you add layers, but feathering out at either ends. Keep going until it's as bright as you want it, but if you go too far and start losing your feathering, you can simply do the same process only using Caliban Green and dragging the brush from the Warpstone Glow up to the edge of the cable instead. Whilst I have this glaze to hand, I'll also flood the Warrior's rib cage and eye sockets with it to start building in the glow effect. A couple goes with the green is all you need just to get a good colour in there. I'll then do the same effect, only this time with Moot Green. Now like I said earlier, Moot Green is very transparent and quite honestly for this purpose doesn't behave very well with water, so I use Lamian Medium to make a glaze here instead. I make it with roughly one part green to four or five parts medium, then do the same thing we did before. Wick off the brush, drag the paint from the darker area to where you want it brightest. Start further in than you did with Warpstone this time and cover a smaller area to really sell this gradient. Take as many passes as you like again to build the colour in. While I have the moot green like this, I'll finish the glow effect in the ribs by just dabbing some around the cartouche. I'll also thin some as I normally would to paint the eyes in now. You've got to be careful for this, I root my elbows on the desk and steady my right wrist against the painting handle for this to minimise shaking as best as I can. I bring the brush in from the side of the eye rather than the front and just touch the brush to the eyeball. Lastly for this gradient, some more secret sauce. I use Uriel Yellow as the final glaze. I'll mix a brush tip of this into some medium to make a very, very thin paint and drag this into the centre of the cable. One or two coats is all you need for a bright, warm green. And the final thing I do before basing is to dot the eyes with Gauss Blaster Green. This is entirely optional, the boys look just fine with the green eyes and you don't have to do this at all. I'll thin the paint a bit more than I normally would for this, use my pointiest brush and brace myself like I did for the eyeballs before, gently introducing the tip of the brush to the centre of the eye. And with that, the warrior is complete. Some of the sculpts have tiny scarabs either around their feet or up on the body somewhere. I'm not covering that here as I'm currently painting up some swarms and I use the same scheme for both, so keep an eye out for that I guess. All that's left is to base them up however you want. Well, that and paint the rest of them. And here's what mine looks like, all based up, ready to join his squad. I hope that's been helpful to anybody watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Hopefully this wasn't too painful to sit through, this was my first video and I'm still figuring this stuff out. Thanks again for watching, good luck with your warriors, see you next time.